Celebrating 30 years of phenomenal trend forecasting, five times a week, Monday through Friday. Here's Gerald Salenti with today's trends in the news. Hi, this is Gerald Salenti. It's Monday, November 16, 2015. And here are some of today's trends in the news. Well, the big news, of course, is you have the Trends Journal. That's right, it was sent to you today. It's online, of course. You'll be getting in the mail shortly as well. And again, it's history before it happens. And just look at the cover and look at the events over this past weekend, which we'll talk about shortly. And of course, there's much more than that. There's great, great story, a great column by Nomi Prinz, the world-renowned author and financial expert about what to expect with the interest rate hikes. And I do a whole follow-up on that. Trends in economics and socioeconomics going into the next year. Great, great piece by Gary Null, world-renowned natural healing expert. So Dr. Gary Null's story, Nomi Prinz, great article by Dr. Paul Craig Roberts. One piece of information after another that puts you ahead of the news and on top of the trends. And of course, we'd love to get your feedback. On to the markets. Well, over there in Asia, Shanghai up a little bit, Nikkei and Hang Seng hanging down. Over there in Europe, not much, but here in the United States, Woof. After that 200-point sell-off last Friday, the Dow snapped back. That's right, over 200 points, 230 points on the news that shares jumped in oil prices, boosted by geopolitical concerns following the weekend terror attack in Paris. And the major U.S. averages closed higher because of (laughs) Chevron and ExxonMobil contributing to most of the gains. Now, the oil prices went up because they assume there's going to be more destabilization in the Middle East. That's no reason for the markets to go up. And it's no really reason for oil prices to go up unless it's sustained. Because they also came out with a little bit of information over the weekend, the International Energy Agency, three billion barrels of oil are stockpiled. That's like over a month's worth of reserves. So, for the markets going up today, no reason. Because the reason the markets went down on Friday was... U.S. retail sales rose only 0.1%, which in real life means no rise at all. The lackluster report suggests that savings from cheaper gasoline are being used to pay rents, which have increased substantially over the past year. Yeah, how about health care, huh? Obamacare, I don't care. You're going to pay more and get less. Yeah, you should see these deductibles, man. It's knocking people out of the box. $3,000, $5,000 deductibles before you get any dough coming in and you got to spend all this money to get a health care plan from a private insurance company. Economic growth slowed to 1.5% annual pace in the third quarter, of course. Clothing stores sales were flat. Auto sales, which they've been saying how great they are, dipped. The weak report will provide some cause for caution at the Fed, and while they are unlikely to change the prevailing bias for a December liftoff, they could add to the case for a shallower tightening path thereafter, said Millen Mulrane, Deputy Chief Economist at TD Securities. So again, all these low oil prices, all the experts were saying It's going to boost retail sales. We said no from the beginning, and the facts speak for themselves. Retailers see no holiday lift from low prices at the pump. All of a sudden now, everybody's putting it together. Yeah, a little late on this, Jackson. Yeah. Consumer spending at retailers climbed just 1.7% since October 
2014 compared with a 4.7 annual increase the year before that. <laughs> so conventional wisdom is once again, once again wrong. Yeah, Nordstrom cuts forecast. The slowdown was across all categories, regions, and channels, including online at both its full-price Northam department stores and its off-price locations. Quote, it's just a traffic thing, said Jamie Nordstrom, president of the stores. We've got less people buying clothes this quarter than we expected, and there's really nothing else to point to. She's being honest. Wow. You don't hear much of that anymore. So, all the consensus is, or most of it is, that the Fed's going to hike rates next month. We will see. On to some other economic news. Important. Quiet U.S. ports spark fear of a slowdown. For the first time in at least a decade, imports fell in both September and October at each of the three busiest U.S. seaports. The declines came during a stretch from late summer to early fall known in the transportation world as peak shipping season when cargo volume typically surges through U.S. ports. Well, they had a little uptick earlier, but it's not making up for that. The numbers don't lie. And again, you're looking at oil inventories swelling. You're looking at price cutting. Nordstrom is cutting their prices too. All of them. Price wars and a slowdown. Slow Eurozone growth hits recovery hopes. The Eurozone grew by a lackluster 0.3%. In the second and third quarters, dashing hopes for a stronger recovery and raising the prospects of more aggressive monetary easing from the European Central Bank that will do nothing other than enrich the players of the market. Ooh, because I forgot. Hey, those numbers just came out from Japan. They're in a recession. GDP declined 0.8%. Two quarters in a row of declining GDP, despite all of the trillions of yen shoved in through Abenomics, these clowns don't know what they're doing. And that's why you have to read Nomi Print's story in the Trends Journal and my follow-up on what the central banks are doing what to expect, and it's more than just economic. There's going to be geopolitical and socioeconomic implications that we spell out around the world as well as across the nation. Oh, another story here in the Financial Times. Rapid rise in diabetes linked to spread of urbanization. How about the rapid rise in diabetes linked to a lot of stupid people eating shitty food? Can anybody add that one up? Or is it too hard? Oh, urbanization, where you got all these fast food joints. And in the United States, they give food stamps so you can buy this crap. Yeah, well, I'm, I'm shocked. Can't figure it out why. I say we should put together a panel to find out what's causing diabetes. Huh? You don't have to put a panel together. It's in this trends journal. Read Dr. Gary Knowles' piece, and you'll see not only the whys and the hows, but the what to do's, because he also provides some trend insights for profit opportunities as well as living a better health. Oh, this is going to shock everybody. British authorities accuse 10 of rigging a benchmark interest rate. Nah, 10. Remember, authorities caught convicted of felonies. Six banks are rigging a LIBOR, the interest rates, and the Forex, the currency markets, and not one head rolled. You say, you know what this is. Bullshit. 
Caution detected. Take precautions. Yeah, and that siren. Yeah, you could see things coming and how they keep moving forward. <laughs> this General Allen, who um, recently was replaced as U.S. Special Envoy in the war against ISIS, he said, the U.S. may be condemned to fight ISIS forever. And then over the weekend, of course, big news was drone strike on Jihadi John boosts U.S. campaign. Look at the horse shit. Jihadi John. Oh, yeah, we got Bin Laden and Jihadi John. They make up this crap with these names. Jihadi John. They're failures. Everything they do is failure. The Afghan war is going on since 2001. The Iraq War since 2003. Libya is destroyed. And they make up this propaganda crap like they got one guy. It's going to change things. Because as we know, it's changed nothing. You saw what happened, this terrible tragedy over in Beirut. Where 43 people were killed by suicide bombers, mostly innocent people. But that didn't make the news, hardly. No, that was pushed back. The tragedy in France got much more coverage. 129 people, or thereabouts, 130 were killed and hundreds wounded. It's out of control. It's out of control. And no one's talking about the why. Who caused it? What brought this about? France and U.S. to ramp up airstrikes after Paris terror attacks. Oh, that'll fix it, man. Another failed strategy. And every one of the politicians are shooting off their fat mouth. And leading the fat mouth charge is Donald Trump. This is like no other war that we've ever had. This is war, believe me. Oh, I'll believe you. Hey, if you said it. You know, this guy keeps repeating the same words over and over again for either two reasons. He's too damn stupid to finish a sentence or he keeps doing it to drive home his point of power and arrogance. This is war, believe me. This is a war. But we don't wear, but they don't wear uniforms. It's not like one country gets the other and the other that's left standing wins. This is a war when you're sneaking around corners and you're sneaking under tables and you have to find out who it is. This is an adult. This is an adult speaking. And they pump this guy up like all these other fat mouths shooting their little mouths and little you-know-whats off in public. I got plans on how to destroy and degrade. They've been saying this for years. All they're doing is murdering people. No one's talking about what conditions have transpired, the climate that caused this hate. No one. Not a peep from the prostitutes. Clown boy Trump goes on, trumpeting out his fat mouth of arrogant... Bullshit level, DEFCON 5. Of course it's DEFCON 5. Hey, I'm Donald Trump. I made billions and my father gave me hundreds of millions to make it happen. Don't you know who I am? I know everything about nothing. This is a much different war than we've ever had. It's a war that's based to a certain extent, and even to a large extent, even to a large extent, on the internet. Yeah. Those were internet weapons. They were virtual reality weapons. It had nothing to do with the internet. Hey, this guy can't be a fighter. He's only a fat mouth. Because a fighter would know you don't need the internet or wouldn't even use one to commit these horrific attacks. You don't have to communicate with anybody over the internet to kill other people, Donald, but they're making the bullshit up 
and has spewed it out. Rubio, Bernie Sanders, every one of them. More war talk. Hey, we should do away with the cover of the current Trends Journal. How dare I speak of peace when they want more war? And they have better knowledge and understanding of the internet in most cases than we do. <laughs> you believe this shit. So we're going to have to get intellectually much smarter. If we got intellectually much smarter, they wouldn't have clowns like you. Rubio, Cruz, Clinton, Huckabee, Christie, Bush, as contestants on the presidential reality show. It's all turned stupid. And Trump is trumpeting it out the loudest. Eh, I forgot Carson. How could I? They're all loud. They're all boisterous. And they're all bullshitters. Peace. Because if we don't face the facts of why this is happening, terrorism is going to escalate into the Third World War. And it's up to us to stop this mad march to war, because that's all they're selling in the media. Yeah. This is Gerald Salenti, and that's some of today's trends in the news.